this is your second feature. And both hesitation wound and between two dawns deal with social and societal issues in Turkey. What attracts you as an artist to such stories? Um, of course, when you decide to make films, uh, there are many reasons. And uh, most of them for me come intuitively, I decide like what I, what I want to do. Uh, so there are many reasons, for example, since I study law in my college, I was already interested in this kind of topics and I, I had the knowledge, I, I had the chance to, you know, think about these issues. Um, but uh, at the same time, I really like to, you know, tell the stories from the character point of view. Uh, and the characters are, uh, my characters are in stuck in between things. Uh, they're trying to, you know, find their way mm. and they're in between things. And I kind of feel Turkey is in a similar position in many sense. And uh, that's why there's a connection between the character and uh, whatever issue is I'm talking. Uh, so I try to understand through the character how the system is working or not working what is the relationship between them? So um, in this case, uh, in hesitation boom, there is a crime, and we um, we try to understand if you know who did it, why uh, he did it. Uh, you know, we we try to understand many things, but also I try to push audience to understand what is the relationship with this crime and the city. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. because I kind of feel everything is connected in a way and uh, I try to discover this through my characters. I think uh, now the ending makes more sense because it connects exactly, exactly. what you said. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain the choice of the title, Hesitation Wound? One is obviously the accused suicide attempt, mm -hmm. but is there more to the title, to the story as a whole? Uh, when I was looking for a word that could help us to work with my, f f with my main actress uh, to understand the film better and also something uh, that could help me as a director, something that gives a perspective. Uh, when I was looking for this, I found hesitation mm -hmm. because um, Characters are hesitating in the film for many things. They don't know what is right or wrong, and they're trying to do their best. They're trying to understand. And um, that's why this word like help us a lot. Um, and second, as you say, um, the accused person is, um, you know, he, he has hesitation wounds on his harm, and uh, because when you want to do something, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have courage, you hesitate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. And this idea of hesitating in between things was like, a, you know, really good connection with the other matters that I'm issues that I'm talking in the background of the film. And uh, I really like this connection. So, uh, and also we are hesitating and that's why we have wounds, you know, uh, as are my characters, my country. So I kind of find that there's a beautiful connection there. So that's why. It fits, it fits. Um, how free would you say Turkish artists are to explore any topic they desire? And what are some popular issues that artists choose to film about in Turkey? In general, uh, yeah. you mean? Or yourself. I mean, uh, for me, as you say, um, everything what I do uh, is related with the soul of human being. Mm -hmm. I try to really go deep into what the character's mind and their psychology, what they think, what they feel, but what they do. Uh, 
and especially I'm really interested when there is a time pressure or different kind of pressure because um, mm -hmm. if I ask you what would you do in or like what you think uh, what he should do you know then you can give like great analytical answers like reasonable uh, ideal mm -hmm. but if something happens to you and if you are have a many kind of pressure and you have to give a reaction and if it's related with you the issue or with someone who is close to you then it's really difficult to give the answer same question but uh, at least the time duration of the answer takes longer and longer mm. so um, I think uh, that's something that I am trying to understand but I always want to have connection with the the social issues that you were mentioning. So that's why also there is some connection in, in between uh, in both of my films. In Turkey, I cannot tell, uh, I cannot generalize anything, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, um, each country has its own problem and that kind of shows, uh, you know, um, to the script, to the films, mm -hmm. artists are dealing with it. Uh, I think, for example, right now, Turkey is going through a huge economical crisis. And uh, I can see that that's kind of like reflecting uh, what people are doing. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what, what else I can say. No, it's perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and what would you say Turkish audiences respond well to? What type of movies attract them to theaters? Um, it's before pandemic. It was a different case. Mm -hmm. Turkey is one of the countries that the you know local films are uh, watched by audience more than let's say Hollywood films. Mm -hmm. It's maybe sixty seventy percent, and people were like going to theater like so much, uh, supporting them. But of course, with the pandemic and what's happening afterwards, it's affected a lot, as uh, in many places mm -hmm. in the world right now. Uh, right now, to be honest, um, and because of the, some economical problem, it's not easy to go to theater. Mm -hmm. Of course, less people go right now. And then um, I see most of them only go for, you know, um, blockbuster films, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I still I still believe that audience will come back to theater and also watch like this kind of films because um, even though people watch films on platforms and it's it uh, it gives us a you know diversity reaching the audience I think it's never same with the going to theater. Because there is an um, experience there, you know. Mm -hmm. You meet with your friend or you don't feel good, you are alone. You go to watch a film, you're in theater, it's dark. So the connection that you have with the film is much more different than watching the film on laptop. So yeah. um, I believe like Turkish audience were like sub going this kind of films much more in the past and I believe we can somehow bring them back to theater. Um, so I'm from Croatia and we've seen one more? Yeah. I'm from Croatia and we've seen a lot of Turkish television uh, in the past 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, mostly soap operas of course. Um, do you think these kind of programs have their value or are they just part of a propaganda campaign? Uh, I think not all of them, but some of them are, of course, uh, propaganda. Some of them are just, you know, um, commercial things. Or, or everything is commercial, but like some of them are, I can see, doing only for money. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but still, there are some that they are doing really good, and it's a big industry, like 
when I go to Europe or like, you know, uh, South America, Middle Eastern, I s still like many Turkish TV series are, you know, seen uh, in the, uh, in many places. And uh, I think like without having something good is, it's not possible. Um, but of course, there are so many TV series, so like there are every kind. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay, one last thing, uh, and then we have to wrap up. What Turkish cinema uh, would you recommend for someone to watch? What's the movie to watch from Turkey? <laughs> mm -hmm. Difficult question. <laughs> I mean, uh, If if it's if I can say something like some time ago, mm -hmm. uh, for example, Once Upon a Time in Anatolia is a great film by Nur Bilge Ceylan. Um, it was I think more than ten years ago. So that would if I would name one film that would be that. That's perfect. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank you.